Okay, everybody. So I'm going to start reading The Science of Success. Okay. And this has all three books by Wallace Waddles. We're going to start with The Science of Getting Rich. That is his, I think, most famous of the three. And I'm going to stumble through this. I'll be reading it online. I might take it off camera, depending on what my bifocals are doing. But I think this is more of a listening video. And also, I'm going to do a chapter. If it's a small chapter, I might do two a day. And um, get your pen and paper handy. And then also, we're going to move on to some other people. Neville Goddard, uh, Francis Scoville Shin. I'm going to start doing all the classic authors. So you have something to listen to when you're in betweens. Okay? And this is my bookmark. This is a beautiful gift that was given to me by one of my business partners. If you know anything about I Ching, um, this is from the I Ching system, but I use this as my bookmark, especially for um, manifesting books in it. I think it helps. It's big, big, big in my life. Okay. So do we want to read the beginning? Yeah, probably not. Don't, do you skip the four? I skip the forward. I'm that kind of person, but I'm just probably going to move this out of screen. Hey, real quick, if you like this, I'm more than happy to do it. Hit like, share, subscribe. Uh, send this on to your friends. Hit share and send this on to a friend of yours that might be having a difficult time, especially right now with money or just believing that, yeah, manifesting does work. And we're going to take you through the steps right now. Okay? So again, I may be moving this in and out. Might be more of a listening video. So if you got to chop veggies or fold laundry, this is a good one because you don't have to watch it. Okay. The right to be rich, and I will stumble over my words, just so you know. I will screw up and have to reread sentences, but that's part of the fun, okay? The right to be rich, chapter one. Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the fact remains that it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. No man can rise to his greatest possible height and talent or soul development unless he has plenty of money. For to unfold the soul and to develop talent, he must have many things to use, and he cannot have these things unless he has money to buy them with. Man develops in mind, soul, and body by making use of things, and society is so organized that man must have money in order to become a possessor of things. Therefore, the basis of all advancement for man must be the science of getting rich. The object of all life is development. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second. Um, I think it's Tony Robbins that said it. And I don't know if you're old enough to remember Tony Robbins, but he was like the self-help guru of like the 80s and 90s. But he talks about you grow or you die. Every minute you get to make a choice, you grow or you die. If you're not growing, you're dying. Okay. So I think what he says there is pretty accurate. The object of life is development. It's not He's not saying you have to get rich. He's not saying like you have to be a billionaire or you have to discover the cure for cancer or you have to be famous, famous, famous. It's just develop. You're just always trying to be your next better self. Okay. Okay. The object of all life is development and everything that lives has an unalienable right to the development. I'm sorry, to all the development it is capable of attaining. Man's right to life means his right to have free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfoldment, or in other words, his right to be rich. So not just rich in money, rich in other things. Let's see. Oh, this is a short chapter. This is going to be our first one together. We're going to break cherry. In this book, I shall not speak of riches in a figurative way. To be really rich does not mean to be satisfied or contented with a little. No man ought to be satisfied with a little if he is capable of using and enjoying more. The purpose of nature is the advancement and unfoldment of life, and every man should have all that can contribute to power, elegance, beauty, and richness of life. To be content with less is sinful. The man who owns all he wants for the living of all life, he is... Let me read that again. The man who owns all he wants for the living of all the life he is capable of living is rich. No man who has not plenty of money can have all he wants. Life has advanced so far and become so complex that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great amount of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. Every person naturally wants to become all they are capable of becoming. 
This desire to realize innate possibilities is inherent in human nature. We cannot help wanting to be all we can be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be. You can become what you want to be only by making use of things. And you can have the free use of things only as you become rich enough to buy them. To understand the science of getting rich, therefore, is... Sorry, to understand the science of getting rich is therefore the most essential of all knowledge. Now, I was taught this as a little kid that money is not money. Money buys options. Money buys opportunity. Money buys tools. You know, tools can be health insurance. Tools, it doesn't mean, you know, hammers and nails. Tools can be education. Tools can be, um, you know, you know, you have a big interview coming up. You have enough money in the bank to go get you know, your hair, your nails done and buy a new outfit. Okay. So just realize that money is just money. It's just, money is just a tool and it's there to get you what you want. Okay. There is nothing wrong with wanting to get rich. The desire for riches is really the desire for a richer, fuller, more abundant life. And that desire is praiseworthy. The man who does not desire to live more abundantly is abnormal. And so the man who does not desire to have enough money to buy all he wants is abnormal. There are three motives for which we live. We live for the body. We live for the mind. We live for the soul. None of these is better or holier than the other. They are all alike. All are alike desirable. And no one of the three, mind, body, or soul, can live fully if either of the others is cut short of a life full. And I'm just screwing up left and right here. You have to understand, so this was written back in like 18 something, I think. (laughs) So the language is a little wordy. When was this first written? Let me see. Not 2017. This was written way long ago. 1910. So sorry if I stumble with the words. I have not had my caffeine. Uh, No one is better or holier than the other. All are alike desirable. And no one of the three body mind or soul can live fully if either of the others is cut short of full life and expression. It is not right or noble to live only for the soul and deny the mind or the body. It is wrong to live for the intellect and deny the body or soul. We are all acquainted with the loathsome consequence of living for the body and denying both the mind and the soul. We see that real life means the complete expression of all that man can give forth through body, mind, and soul. Whatever he can say, no man can be happy or satisfied unless his body is living fully in every function, unless the same is true of his mind and his soul. Wherever there is an unexpressed possibility or function not performed, there is an unsatisfied desire. Desire is possibility seeking expression or function seeking performance. I got to tell you guys something. I know... I speak to a lot of ladies. A lot of my clients are uh, female. And a lot of times, especially as we get older, we're caretaking for other people. We are so wrapped up in the doing and like the getting of money, but we don't, this is what I tell a lot of my ladies and you can, you can comment down below because you know this, if you talk to me, I say, take care of yourself first, do special things for yourself, buy something fabulous, work out, eat right. Because I know I use my head all day long. I'm in, I'm in my brain most of the day. What gets me going is getting on the treadmill. If I walk on the treadmill, I have a pen and paper by my treadmill. Um, because I'll deny my body all day long. I won't work out. I won't do, I'll eat cake. I'll do whatever. But as soon as I start taking care of my body, my mind clicks in. So they really are symbiotic. So you have to take care of your soul which is your intuition. It's your love. It's your passion. It's things that really, I hate to use this term spark joy. You have to take care of your physical body. You have to, it's not selfish. I don't know somewhere along the line. It's like selfish. If you want to eat right and work out. Okay. You do not have to be a size two. I'm not a size two, but you do have to take care of this vessel that you're running around the world in. And And don't forget your mind, which is what creates everything. We're going to, the more you do manifesting, the more you're going to realize your thoughts create everything. So yeah, what he's saying here is keep everything churning. It's kind of like a big sundial or like a big clock. Okay. Man cannot live fully in body without good food, 
comfortable clothing, and warm shelter, and without freedom from excessive toil. Rest and recreation are also necessary to his physical life. I don't, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there is a guy, um, Reverend Ike. I love Reverend Ike. I tell everybody about Reverend Ike. He was a preacher in the 70s and 80s, and he had uh, a church in Harlem. I don't, know, I don't know now if it's Washington Heights or if it's still Harlem, but um, I think his kids still run it. But he preached prosperity. He was a prosperity preacher, and people tore him down. But he said something, and he said, you can handle life a lot better. You can make better decisions behind the wheel of a Mercedes with a full stomach. You know, he's right. <laughs> he's right. And, you know, he talks about we always have problems. Everybody has problems. When you look around, you go out. Don't think that you're the only one. Everybody has problems, but you want your problem to be, am I going to um, pay my health insurance, you know, monthly, or am I just going to write a check for the whole year? You want that to be your, your big problem, you know, for the, for, 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 you know, for right now, instead of, oh my God, I, I have a cold or I broke a bone and I don't have any health insurance. So you can choose what problems you have. So please know that. But um, yeah, you're, you need rest, you need relaxation, you need good food, you need those things, and that's going to amp your life up. You get to choose what problems you have. Your problem could be, oh, do I do yoga today or Pilates? That could be like your problem, okay? So, um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Okay, he cannot live fully in mind without books and time to study them without opportunity for travel and observation or without intellectual companionship. You guys are my intellectual companionship. Sometimes I'm living out here on the sticks. I get a little nuts. Okay, I get a lot of nuts. I get kind of crazy sometimes. But um, talking to you guys and, and hearing from you guys and your comments, that, that, kind of, that keeps me going. It really does. Uh, to live fully in the mind, he must have intellectual recreations and must surround himself with all objects of art and beauty he is capable of using and appreciating. To live fully... In soul, man must have love, and love is denied, and love is denied expression by poverty. I'm gonna tell you guys something. Poverty and richness has nothing to do with your bank account. It really has to do with your soul. Little kids have no money. Little kids don't have debit cards or bank accounts or stuff to worry about. But when they see something that they love, what do they do? They light up, they run to it. It could be something silly. It could be absolutely something silly. How many of you have had kids out there and you bought them all the Christmas presents or all the holiday presents and they played with the boxes? The boxes were much more fascinating, right? And you said to yourself, why did I kill myself getting those presents when they just... So the joy comes from what really brings you joy, not the money of it, okay? So he's saying here, have time and leisure, have companionship, have people to talk to, and surround yourself with beauty. It does not mean you have to break the bank. Oh my goodness. I, just a can of paint, 30 bucks. Put a beautiful color up on your wall. It makes you happy. That's it. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. I find some of the coolest artwork at Goodwill. Go to your thrift stores. Go to your Goodwills. I find really beautiful things there that I have looked up. And yeah, they might be like a print or they might be like, you know, not, not like a one of a kind, you know. But I'll look them up on Amazon and they're selling for 10 times more than they have a Goodwill. So there you go. I found all sorts of neat, neat stuff there. Okay. But to live without love, and it doesn't mean love another person. It means just love in your soul is the expression of poverty. That's true poverty. So we can have multimillionaires, billionaires that are miserable. They're the true poverty stricken, okay? A man's highest happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits on those he loves. Love finds its most natural and spontaneous expression in giving. The man who has nothing to give cannot fill his place as a husband or a father, as a citizen or a man. It is the use of material things that a man finds full life for his body, develops his mind, and unfolds his soul. It is therefore of supreme importance to him that he should be rich. So giving. And, I, and don't forget this is written in 1910, so there's, there's, it's all man, not woman. But yeah, giving. Giving because to be able to give, you have to have something. 
So it's, it's again, this cycle. It's everything is this cycle. So to end the chapter, it is perfectly right that you should desire to be rich. If you are a normal man or woman, you cannot help doing so. It is perfectly right that you should give your best attention to the science of getting rich, for it is the noblest and most necessary of all studies. If you neglect the study, you are derelict in your duty to yourself, to God and humanity, for you can render to God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. So that was chapter one. So let me know what you guys think. That was our little test video. You want me to keep reading? You want me to keep uh, reading other books? You want me to shut up and just read? No commentary? That's fine. Have a discussion below. Check, I mean, uh, bounce some ideas off each other. Give, give each other hope. Give each other good vibes to manifest. This is talking about money, abundance, anything you want. Okay, so have a great day, guys. This is going to be in place of the Monday manifesting video, which I'm still trying to load. You might get two manifesting videos today. My gift to you. Have a great day.